you're getting held underwater. You can't swim up. There's a waterfall coming down on you. Your limbs are getting... And I'm just telling myself, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> then it gets serious. You're blacking out any second. You can feel the life squeezing out of you. It could go at any moment. But then somehow Our childhood was pretty magical. Our parents moved to Kauai when I was just a few weeks old from snowy Michigan. They just really fell in love with Kauai. They kind of sold everything and just moved to the little island. It was just an ever-expanding playground, really being raised by nature. Playing in the sand and the ocean as like naked little babies. Yeah, as an older brother, I had to like be really careful about what I did around them because they would just do whatever I did. We kept each other in check and beat each other up and made sure we're all, like always doing our best. Woo! I started surfing when I was three. Alex and I would be like, you can't surf today, the waves are too big for you. And then Ko would paddle out without us knowing. We're like, what are you doing out here? I was so passionate about surfing. I did an event when I was five, qualified for nationals at age six. By like early teens, Co was surfing bigger waves than we were. I got three national titles under my belt. I wanted to be world champion at a young age, you know? That was my mindset. I wanted to surf better waves, bigger barrels, longer barrels, every day. And then this footage leaked of just the longest best left in the world. And I'm like, I know what my life purpose is. In the middle of nowhere, in the Namibian desert, you just hear the thunder of the wave coming down the point. Years and years of experience led up to this one way. Inside the barrel, it's a place that no human being has ever been. You're pioneering this place. There's pressure, the wave's spitting. And it's unpredictable. It does whatever it wants. It's like this deep, deep focus. And you don't want to make a mistake. I grab the camera and I turn it back at me and I just start screaming. Ah! A three to five second barrel is a long barrel. And I just lucked into this 27 second barrel. I came out and I was just like, oh my God. No human has ever rode in a barrel that long. After that clip launched, my career started skyrocketing. I won the Barrel of the Year. I started landing some cover shots. Sponsorships were coming in. Travel around the world. Strike mission here, strike mission there. Pedal on the metal. After the session, okay, let's go party now. Not sleeping that much, and then I'd wake up in the morning. A little tired, as you can see. And then do it again. A little bit of life left in us. So, um... I was actually, I was coming back from my third trip to Skeleton Bay and I just like broke the internet again. I was on this crazy high, just so fried. Ready to, to get a barrel. <laughs> there was this biggest swell ever going to Neos. Even though I was just in Africa three days ago for three weeks, I'm like, I'm going, this is my year. Like I gotta make the statement. Crazy travel. Show up that day, it was like, 
I don't even care, I'm going surfing. Third wave, this bomb comes in. Paddle up the face, whip it, and just go. And I look and it's a complete fucking closeout. I get launched and I get knocked out. Everything went blue. And I can hear this violin playing. This peaceful violin. And all of a sudden I was like, wait, I'm underwater right now. I'm underwater, I'm underwater, don't black out, don't black out. You're okay, you're okay. Get to the surface, throw myself on my board, and I look down and there's scratches over my whole arm, my entire back, and my whole back of my head. I had to slam my back of my head on the coral. We got a call the next day that like he wasn't doing too well and it was just so scary as a brother. He didn't remember his own name. He didn't know where he was. Light hurt, noise hurt. People's faces were changing in front of me. I finally made it back to Hawaii and can't even get out of bed anymore. I'm just here in the dark. It seemed like the life was sucked out of him. I could definitely tell like he wasn't, like Koa wasn't there. I start feeling this depression that's just like, I could just end my life. I could, no, I don't wanna do that. Don't do that, that's a dumb thought. But I could do it, that could, get me out of this pretty quickly, actually. That was a conversation I had with myself, like, a couple times a day. I did try to seek help and guidance from doctors, and no one could really tell me what was going on in my head. It was a traumatic brain injury. It stayed like that for five months. And then, I mean, fuck. Which, really it was this crazy mushroom trip experience, which I don't know if we want to put that in or not, but. If you're okay with it, by all means. Yeah, I mean, it was like a last ditch effort. To see if I could heal my brain. There's this place on Kauai where you can hike in. I went with my brother, super safe environment. We have a lot of experience with it, so there's, there's no fear miles away from anybody and we were just sitting along this natural pool. We split psilocybin mushrooms and we embarked on this journey. I came into this whole thing with some questions. Why am I feeling this way? Am I going to be like this forever? Am I going to be able to surf again? As soon as you ask the question, you get crazy insight, you know? And crazy is probably not the right word for it. <laughs> you get deep insight, you get sane insight. This voice was like, look at your whole life, your whole childhood, everything you've been through. Your body, your character, and your emotion. You are an amazing person. You're here to do good. You gotta love yourself and embrace it. And it started just getting super, super intense until it just like filled me up. Oh my God, my heart is full now. He really connected with himself. It was a beautiful thing to see. My face ID on my phone didn't work anymore when I came back. I don't know if that was a glitch, but that actually happened. I was such a different person. I journaled after it. Let your brain injury be your guide to your life. Let it lead you to your path to healing. Listen, check in with it, slow build, and become the superhuman you are. From there, I feel like I had a true north. Start taking care of myself, getting full nights of sleep. I realized I wasn't being honest with my actual energy levels. So, no more alcohol. No smoking weed, no more coffee. Good morning. Breath work. 
bring it back to the breath. You need to stretch, you need to train. If you wanna surf these big waves, you need to be ready and present for it. I need to surf four foot waves and then five foot waves. Go out when it's 10 feet and you don't need to go on a 10 footer if you don't want to. Who fucking cares? Like it's whatever you want to do. If you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. That mindset allowed me to like relearn it from ground up. I'm getting stronger. I can see clearer. I'm surfing the best I've ever surfed in my life. I'm really excited about that. I don't know if I want to be a world champion anymore, but I want to be the best surfer I can be. And where does that take me? Well done, man. You're just getting started. I think he's just scratching the surface, really. It's pretty inspiring to be around. I'd consider him very wise for his age. Sometimes it feels like I'm talking to like a grandpa when I talk to Koa. You're sitting next to a lake, and there's a reflection of the mountain. If the waters in your mind are completely still, then you can perfectly see the mountain. But if your mind's all over the place, and you can't even see the mountain. Stillness is where all the answers come from. It's a lot of work to stay there, though. I'll sit and I'll be still. And then that question that I had, an answer will just go, whoop, boom! Wow, okay. That's it. Thank you. Is that you? <laughs>